And it's how bad do you want it? That's the question. Anyone who comes and sits down with me to, to start, I'm saying, how badly do you want it? Are you willing to do everything and anything you need to do? Because if, you, if you're already put off by the way I'm talking to you or the, the questions I'm asking you, then you're not ready. We've got a guest on top of a guest. Hello, thank you for calling in. You're live with FK Studio. We're here, Wes. Hello. Hello. What are you in a bar? Thank you for calling in FK Studio. Your name, please. I hope you didn't hang up. <laughs> <laughs> Call her back. Call her back. <laughs> no, call her back. Hello, call you live. Hello, Hello uh, this is uh, Francisco FK Studio. We believe you just hanged up. You called in? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. What's Let's go. What is being creative? To me? Yes. To me, being creative is being able to use your brain to fix problems or try to create a solution um, that benefits yourself and everybody else. How difficult do you think that is? Because I find a lot of people, they've got, like me looking on the outside, I see they've got so much energy, so much potential, but they just can't tap in and it's literally a button away. Mm. So how difficult do you think that is in your position having doing what you've been doing for so many years and working with so many big people, big brands? I think the key is understanding what your creative strengths are. And what you are good at and what you're not good at. And I think until you can hone in on what that is, that's what I think I understand what you say. If you see someone, they've got all this energy, but they don't know how to channel that energy creatively. Well, it, 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 just, I, it, it, it frustrates me. Because mm. I've I got, um, got friends who are given everything to mm. nine to five. Mm -hmm. And I mean everything. But the day... What I, I what I found one of them in particular the day it happened when there was a managerial transition, mm -hmm. new manager for whatever reason didn't like them. Yeah, literally the next week, their work life was just a nightmare. <laughs> three weeks later, they quit. I'm like, bro, you gave three years mm -hmm. to that, mm -hmm. and just because someone else came and didn't like you, and it was it was actually a hard conversation to have with him because I say. I've been telling you for years, leave. And he was scared of leaving and they pushed him up and he went downhill from there. But do you feel like because he didn't have a, an outlet that he could necessarily try or did he... Because one thing I found is I've, there's two people in life. There's, peop there's triers and there's people who are just happy to do as they're told, in a sense. So with regards to someone's happy to come into work and you say, go there, pick that up, that come back they're happy to do whatever you tell them to do and then there's people who are like do you know what I've spent enough time being told what to do I'd like to try and build the situation for myself and be the person telling people what to do not because you want to just tell people what to do but but he wasn't happy he wasn't all. happy like he he hated going to work so but the money was okay it wasn't good it was okay mm -hmm. and his his um his defense to me whenever I spoke to him he was like I can't leave because I need the money. So when when he got released, when he got fired, well, let's just say fired, when he got fired, I'm like, well, what happened? How are you going to survive now? And I've been trying to tell you for ye literally years. It was there for about three years. I'm like, they're using you. They're draining you. Oh, don't want to, I'll get it tomorrow. But three years went. And then when they released him, and he was just down. He was down. Like, he couldn't believe it because he put, everything into that company it wasn't it wasn't it was just a pay it was the guy on the payroll yeah but until you learn that lesson for yourself i guess you'll never know how do you channel them how because i know you work with a lot of people how do you get them to sit down and say okay we we are at point a but we're going to point z and and they they basically they have to come on board on your frequency how do yeah. you get them there <laughs> I know. Okay, how do you get them? Sorry, ladies, you can't like 
listen, I've known this man for a short amount of time, but it doesn't feel like it. He's, he's operating on a different frequency from most of us. So when I actually said to your frequency, I'm actually apologizing for that because I don't think many people can catch up to your frequency. Like, yeah, How do you get them frequency. closer to your frequency, to you? Um, first of all, we're all in the same frequency, my brother. Um, secondly, I think it's just all about really identifying what your strengths are. I think until the person, anybody who comes to me, I, I spend enough time around them to see what exactly is their strength. What is that overlying thing that if they put all their effort into, is the thing that will make them successful. And I think until we get them to that place of understanding exactly what your strength is and how to channel it, I think everybody is in the same boat. We're just kind of channeling this creativity or this need to do something. So for me, I just spend time and I pay attention, listen to them, try and under get an understanding of who they are as a person to then maybe advise them on what's the best route to take. For example, I have a, a, a person I know who does music and they have got a passion for clothing. In my opinion, my humble opinion, their journey is through music. So I will always push them to concentrate on the music. Yes, have other passions and have other channels to push your creativity, but invest your most time into what you're best at and you will get the results that you're looking for. I think, like you must understand as well, when you're dealing with so many different energies and so many different things that people are trying to achieve, even myself, I have to have a word with myself every now and then and say, listen, Wes, you've got a bit too much different things on your plate at the moment let's scrape everything off and let's just concentrate on the one that is going to get us further down the line to where we're trying to get to. How, how do you identify that one? Because I, I know being in a space of creativity, is a, ideas are born pretty much every day. Mm -hmm. So how do you decide? Because every, when every idea is born, I find like, wow, this is the one. And your energy takes you there. How do you then pull back and say, oh, this is not the one. Let me do this one. Because mm -hmm. it's easy for us to pursue the l wrong one. Or we're pursuing, like as you say, you, you, you released one. We pursued so, so many, like four, five, six. And we're working so hard, which a lot of people do work so hard, but they're not being productive. That's right. And I, and I think it just comes down to that. In a Let's say in a four-week period, I would try and be pick the project that I can actually be the most productive in to concentrate my efforts on the things that everything is to hand. Okay, I've got the equipment, I've got the clothing, I've got the branding, everything I can do. Any any situation where I'm having to wait on a third party or wait for agreements, contracts, whatever it may be that's kind of holding up, I always put those things to a back burner because I can't affect, I have no control over when these things will be completed. So I try to not concentrate as much effort into them but the things that are within my control that I know I can achieve something if I really put the time and effort into it that's what I will then try and dedicate as much time to how long did it take you to figure out what it is you're destined to do because having spoken to you it's like you're not interested being the guy you're just interested in helping other people realize the full potential and I think a lot of people suffer from identifying who they really are mm -hmm. and what they are put on earth to do. How did you discover that? <sighs> I think it's just been a long, long journey, even to this day, just even having conversations with you over the past couple of weeks, you've helped to you helped me be a mirror for me and identify things that I may be not aware of. So I would say it's an ongoing... Sorry, let me stop you there. Ladies and gentlemen, as we go through life, a lot of people are so happy to criticise you and throw the things that you're doing wrong. And this man just paid me a compliment. And a lot of people are not good at taking compliments. Yeah, maybe you. So I'm going to get him to repeat it again just to make sure. Make sure that Rasta in the background didn't do some magic trick in editing. <laughs> so... <laughs> Wes, can you please say what you said again? I'm learn you know what I'm learning to appreciate and taking compliments. That's cool, man. But as I said, um your Francis has been a great mirror for me. He even yeah. said my name this time. There you go. There you go. Mr. Francis Cole. Oh Jesus. 
nah, he's been a great mirror for me, just someone of a same level and experience to just be a mirror for the things I'm going through and maybe just tell me certain truths or things that other people in my circle maybe don't see or would identify. So it's good to have people, not necessarily your friends, just people who maybe are experienced or wise or run businesses to just get different perspectives of. I've grown more from people who I don't know giving me opinions than people I do know. Yeah, that That is... When I first started all my ventures and I would say all of them were successful, 100%. Successful to the point where every, I learned something and I've always used it. All of them, including this one, which is so disappointing and I, I can never figure out. It took me a very long time to actually figure out as a, a very good friend of mine. Actually, I, see, I see him as my second mentor. It's a Francis, don't worry about trying to get people to understand what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing, and when they're ready, they'll jump on. So what used to frustrate me, I guess it still does to, to some degree, is a lot of people that I do not know show me more support than those who are my friend. Now, I'm not saying you are my friend. If you will show me support, you look at me feeling some type of way, don't. Because you helped me. I didn't say all my friends. A lot, But if you are my <laughs> friend and you don't help me, sorry, bro, I'm just telling the truth, you know? But you can still like and share and, and pass this on, you know? Everyone helps in different. So what you said is important and that gets to me all the time. Like, Why is it a stranger that I don't know is helping me more than my guy? Well, for me, you don't really choose your friends. But a lot of us, we grew up in certain environments when people who you've kind of grown up around they just become your friends by default you don't really filter them out until you get a bit older <laughs> <laughs> you know your mom tries to warn you and your nan and everyone else like yo that one there you know, no good but you know it's my boy man it's a man then actually my mom used to do the opposite why can you not be like I'm gonna name why can you not be like Caleb why can you not <laughs> but again it's I don't believe you should have to rely on your friends for that because at the end of the day, everyone is their own journey. And my journey doesn't match my friends' passions and the things that they're trying to achieve in their lives. So it's best that I find people who are trying to achieve the same things to align my business self with. And then having my friends who are not necessarily in the same bubble, it's, it's a good balance because I don't have to talk shop with them and I can just be me. So I prefer it, to be honest, because... If I had to mix my business life and my friendship life anymore, I feel like I, I, it would it would mess up the balance. I'm happy to have both separate. But as you said, I, I get it with the support and stuff like that. It gets a little bit frustrating, but at the same time, what I'm trying to achieve is bigger than my friendship circle. So why why do I need the validation from from them? If that makes sense. I think you said it right. The validation we we're seeking validation so we can feel accepted. Mm. And instead of just us, because I believe every single person is 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 put on earth to do something special. Mm -hmm. And social media don't help because we see others and we're trying to copy and duplicate what others are doing and we're forgetting who we are. And it's like, oh, if he's doing it right, that must be the, on that must be the only way to do it right. So I want to do it like him. And then my friends will like me. How hard is it to be in a creative space like yourself and you're trying to, not copy others? I think everything is a copy of a copy of a copy, in, in, in my opinion. Yeah. And I've seen people copy my work who, in reality, are on such a high level. They have no need to, but if they do it, and get to call it inspiration, <laughs> <laughs> then I feel like this kind of open season when it comes to that. But it, you just got to have your own integrity at the end of the day. I, I was never a person who, and we're from we're from you know a certain background from the streets. From I didn't we never wanted to turn up with the same pair of trainers on. Never, never want to turn up with the same swag or even a hint of the you same. You are going back home <laughs> to get changed, and if you miss that bus because there was no phone calls back then, there was not what we didn't have mobiles. If you're not back within twenty minutes, you're staying you're staying in the ends by yourself. There you go. And so that's where 
I know I've always lived by that same ethos. There's no way I want to take my time to design and create something to turn up and it's the same as someone else's. It's, em- it's embarrassing for me. And even when fashion, the way fashion kind of changed and everyone was wearing the same trainers and turning up to events in the same outfits, I, I understood it because that was the trend. But I know for us growing up, that would have been a no-no. Like Unless we organised, we all turned up in the same tracksuit for whatever reason. I, I don't even remember that day ever happening. No, I think it happened when black, there was a phase of black tracksuit came in and I think there was just, it was a whole black on black, black trainers, black tracksuit. That yeah. was, yeah. I definitely missed that way. I, <laughs> I, I was, I was, I was busy with my Acubox. <laughs> they know about my Acubox. Don't worry. We, we won't, we won't get into that. We, we've oh, been damn. into that. I mean, how, how, how important is it for you to have the right energy around you? Unfortunately, I soak up energy like a big old sponge. And so it is one of the most important things for me personally. Only as I'm getting older, I'm realizing what it is. And I can look back and see how it affected me in the past. But it's very important for me. Everything has to be tuned into the same channel, the same frequency. And if it's not, it it, it definitely affects me physically and mentally. In what way? Um... Physically, I start to get a bit stressed, a bit. I'm not as relaxed as a person as I would be. I'm a lot quicker to, and just mentally, I'm just not, what's the right word? I can't concentrate, give what I'm working on my full attention because the the off frequency of the rabbit is distracting me. So I could be getting distracted by the smallest things and any excuse to stop work and Instagram, social media, and other things, not they're not good vibrations, they're not energy frequencies to have around you when you're trying to be creative. That is true. And as I was telling you the other day, I've had uh, a, a few friends. I wouldn't know if they do it intentionally or not. That I can't, I can't say because I know if I asked them, they, would, they don't even realise, but they used to steal, they were thieves. As in when I said thieves, they used to steal my energy. <laughs> no, they used to drain energy vampires. Because that's what we call them. I'm, I'm, I'm so what if if I know you and I regard you as my friend. If you call me, I'm I will help you, providing it's not bringing any harm to anyone else. And a lot of people used to come, and I used to be yes, yes, yes. My phone would ring, yes, yes. And what was so beautiful and amazing when I went to them asking for something in return. <laughs> Should keep the same energy, people. And you know what? They had no shame. This is I think that really upset me. They had no shame. So they would say no to me and they'll make a beautiful excuse to the point of, I believe it, yeah, you know, I'm cool. And then two weeks later, a month later, two, they would still come back and ask me for something else. <laughs> Let's get better friends. I do need to get better <laughs> friends, so please don't ring me anymore. <laughs> if I don't ring you, don't ring me. I'm, I'm joking. Just, yeah. just subscribe. Luckily, it. I've I've got very good friends who are the. What's the word when you've got? You know, you've got a good grounded circle around you. Keep you. What's the word? Keep your. Keep you grounded. Keep you grounded. My friends will always tell me the truth unequivocally, and be the balance. Like you said, you you said I don't like to take a compliment or. <laughs> He doesn't take. He does not take a compliment. He, no matter what compliment you give him, he's gonna just like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, yeah. just back off. Yeah. But I think going back to the point you asked about when I realized that I wanted to help people, I've always had the ability to be able to soak up information and relay it so people understand it. And I picked that up early on as a skill in school, where I'd realize if I finished my work, the teacher would say, "Always, oh, why don't you go and help Martin?" struggling <laughs> Martin's gonna look at you where's your blast yeah I'm sorry back? Martin no, Martin was just in the back of the class breaking <laughs> chairs you know what I mean that's all he was doing so it's like where's going and from then I realised that you know I can get most people to just either respond or listen or just take in information and I'd never started a creative journey until t- 2011 when I was literally just sick of getting up and getting on the train and being packed into these trains and Thinking if, and then we got to a station once and they closed the ca- station from the outside. And so they put a cage up so we can't get out. Why? I don't know. I don't even know. It was some safety measure. 
Oh, keeping you in? Yeah, so um, Baker Street Station, so imagine. Okay. I go upstairs, so. And they've got the shutters. They've got the shutters yeah. up. So we've all just got off the train. And so there's tracks and we're shut up and they're saying, sorry, you're going to have to wait, security issues. And I was sat there, literally herded into this space, thinking to myself, do you know what, bro? If I, like, if something happens here. And then you're hopeless. <laughs> I'm done, and I was just like, you know what? I got to make a plan now. I've got, I've got to get out of this rat race, literally, because sitting on that train, that packed train every morning, and doing it over and over again, I started to really. I wasn't depressed at all, but I started to feel like I could see how, if this is it, this is life. I can definitely see how people would start to fall into some sort of depression because if that's if they can't see a way out, and from then I started to make a plan to get out of this rat race or that rat race. And it took me four years to actually quit that job I was doing, but I handed in my resignation, and uh, I've never been back since. Wow. But you got to do it. you got to risk it. And I was 29 at that point. Did you regard yourself old or young by then? Because <laughs> at 29, now it's time for old. I think I, I, I was trying to take advantage of that last... <laughs> 20 <laughs> that last year my the 20s. last six months I thought if I do it now I'm still young I'm in my 20s so I took advantage of that of that 29 yeah I thought I'm only 30 now I'm gonna be mature enough to have my own business and, and from then it was a it was a four-year journey of a lot of ups a lot of downs this is my fourth I would say unit no my third no this is my fifth unit space so this isn't an a success story by any means, but it's just, I think I'm the story of a trier. I think God loves a trier because no matter what, no matter the hardships and no matter what I'm going through, I feel blessed. I'm healthy. My family's healthy. All the little things in life that you need, I have, I have no complaints. I have no worries. I have no stresses bigger than the majority of the human beings on the planet. So the fact that I get up and I have somewhere to go and express myself and do what makes my heart feel good and what makes me feel good is a blessing in itself. So I'm just happy to be here. Do you know what I mean? Uh, it's, well, I, I, I believe, um, just like you, I believe this. <coughs> a lot of people think, oh, I'm going to own my own business and I'm going to make money. Mm. That, that's the own business, money. Own business, money. Or own business, money and fame. Mm-hmm. There is a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes a lot of people don't see but to be honest with you of every single business venture I've had I enjoyed those challenges I enjoyed the broke times because I believe when I when I was at my financially poorest state which is I'm still financially poor by the way don't get twisted with all of this uh, Rasta and JB yeah, they let me. They they let me <laughs> use the space. You know, I'm serious. Yeah, we're just lodgers, man. <laughs> yeah, we just yeah. we second. We use the chairs yeah, and the mics. Yeah. <laughs> but I believe. I think more. My brain is sharp, because mm-hmm. I'm trying to get out of being broke and poor. But I think a lot of people where they go wrong is they expect it to be instant. It's going to take six months. It's going to take a year, two years, three years, five years. But I also strongly believe, because I've seen it with my friends, is if I'm in a state of being broke and consistently working on my thing, those friends or those people in employment, they're just as broke as me. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. they're even more stressed. Mm -hmm. But more importantly than the financial side of things, they're not in control. Definitely not. I'm in control of my situation. That's right. You dictate when and where you need to be places and who and what you do. Exactly. And it's a calculated risk because if he, if the business becomes good and blows, I've made it. Mm-hmm. Whereas if the business falls and whatever, I can go back to a job. And guess what? When I go back to a job and my friend has been working all along, we're still going to be on the same level. Mm-hmm. You know, because a lot of people say, oh, Francis, but you're wasting money in this, you're wasting money in that. I'm like, I appreciate you, but you are not doing what I'm doing. Are you saving any money? Mm. No. And that's the balance. And that's that's why I believe there's two types of people. There's 
the people that are just happy to say, do you know what, I'm just, I just need security, which is nothing wrong with that. And they're happy to go in and, and do what they're told and work and get paid on the 30th and pay their bills on the 1st. And life is great for them. And I know with people like us, I guess we're just not happy with that. No, I can never be happy with that. And I, you know what? I, I think, you know what? It, it comes down to one thing. Are you happy? Yeah. If you honestly going to wake up at 4 a.m., 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 9 a.m., whatever, if you do the late shift from 8 p.m. to 7 in the morning, if you're going to wake up and you are happy doing that, you, you're successful in life. You really are successful. If you are unhappy of doing that, Please, I, I, I beg you to change. Just, uh, and I think those are the strongest people, but they just don't realize. Imagine waking up for over two years, three years, even a year. Every morning, you wake up to go to work and you're unhappy and you're still doing it. Again, that's how many people are in that position and they just don't feel like changing their situation. Um, in my... My first year of business, um, me and my business partner at the time, Theo, we kept on, we was learning how to screen print and we kept on running into the same problem every day. And for the third day in a row, we've got the same problem. We said, you know what, that's it. Like, we've had enough of this. So we've had that moment where we're like, we're just going to sell the equipment and give up. And we've come in the next day with the attitude of, no, nah, today is the day. I get it. And I can't remember if it was me or we heard it or, but there was a saying that you can't do the same thing and expect the same results. And no, sorry, you can't do the, the same, same thing and expect different results. Yeah, you can't do the same thing over and over and yeah. expect that's a sign of insanity. That's right. And yeah. this, we heard this quote and we came in with that attitude and that mindset and we literally took everything. Albert Einstein. Was it Albert Einstein? Right. So we came in and we took everything down and we started from scratch and we rebuilt our equipment and we literally had to cleanse our whole system of the error which was there that we couldn't identify or get rid of mm. or rectify. So we literally had to scrap it all and start again. And from that, we both learned a lesson in, instead of waiting for two, three days or at that moment, nope, stop here, start again. And I think that's a lot of the problem with people in general. They're, they're not happy to just break out of their comfort zone or do something that's going to be really difficult for a couple hours or a day just to get the success of the result. And I find that attitude in so many people when it comes to putting in the hard work. I'm not scared. Of, I, I love the hard work. I love the journey. I love the grind. I love mm -hmm. the story. Everything about that for me is what makes this interesting. It makes the fact I can sit here. I, I'm not successful. I haven't got money. I haven't got properties or nothing. But I know my journey has more value than mo most people because I've been through it. I've been through every up, down, debt, success of... I am a story in myself, so I'm not worried about success. Success will come. But like Francis said, like I'm rich in my journey and my experience and my knowledge, and I am in a place where I can give it back and help people. So that's what I just try to do. If each one teach one, if I can help as many people as I can, then it will come back around eventually. And I feel the same energies in Francis. I feel since I've met you, my brother, that's the energy I feel of you. I feel every time it's just a given experience and you're just trying to give to as many people as possible. And that's something I, I resonate heavily in saying, but I respect it a lot. I appreciate that, sir. Um, I, I don't give to receive, which a lot of people do. And I think that's where we go wrong. Don't get me wrong. There are times I wish I could receive <laughs> all I gave. Lessons are due. You know, you know, but you give what you just give. Just start making phone calls. Yo, you remember? <laughs> <laughs> No, nah, look, we we uh, we have to, we have to, but a lot of people come through your place. A lot of people come through your place. Mm. Please tell these people what you do. Please, <laughs> I don't even think I could put it into one thing. Do you know what I mean? I think if I put it down to one title, say I'm a. I don't know. See, you see, that's it. That is a good problem when you're trying to figure out what it is you do because you've got so many options and you don't know how to define it. So please, ladies and gentlemen, go out there and find yourself good problems. While he's thinking, so I'm going to have to speak to you while he's thinking. <laughs> yeah, I am. I, 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 I don't even know, Francis. So I'll have to let you kind of 
figure that one out. He's a cur- okay. So you you work with people when it comes to they're trying to develop their own brand, yeah, clothing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we we're gonna appeal for people who attach success with with the caliber of people you've worked with. So am I allowed to say the brand? He he yeah, he's, he's worked with ASOS. A number one seller on ASOS till he decided to go out and do his own thing. He worked with pretty much Deneo, So Solid, a lot of people. If you actually go in a lot of UK musicians, you will see a lot of his branding in there. And there's a lot of UK well known brands out there that this man is responsible for their creation in the background, but you just never get to see him. So please tell them some of your brands. That I, I can't do it. I can't do enough justice. I could try. No, man. Do you know what it is? I'm 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 happy to just do what I do. It's it's not even about the, the end goal. Or, you know what I mean? Um, that's why I DJ instead of MC. Okay, I'm going to do it. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Wes. Mm. So if you need to build your brand, Wes, if you've got some T-shirt you want to do, Wes. Yeah, do you know what? Yeah, so I'd say uh, I'm. See, I, I jogged his memory. Yeah, yeah, now. Yeah. Let's go. I'm the person, say, for instance, you've got an idea or you want to bring your creation, the thing that's bumping into your life, I can help get you your, your starting point. So if you don't have an Instagram page, if you don't have a website, if you don't have a concept, I can help you put it all into a nice package and then send you off into the world and let you grow you, into a butterfly. You see, if you've got an idea, but you just don't know how to communicate. Mm. This is the man you sit down with. He's going to ask you questions. Even if you can say, I don't know, something good, I don't know, something good, he will come out with something good for you. And and he's, his contact list is just, wow. <laughs> it's all right. You know, it's just like, he's like a one-shop guy. You just go there, you get it done. And the, the things he does is, is beautiful. Where do you get your creation from? I know you got so many, but where do they come from? What drives them to come out? Do you know, um, in general, I've always been very creative, but I feel like the schooling systems and life systems push those things. They're secondary assets. They're not encouraged. They're not championed. They're not given any kind of respect. So I literally just ignored that side of me and just pursued, I was a pharmaceutical scientist, that's my qualification, that's my actual, if I could step back into a career that I've studied for, I'd be a pharmaceutical scientist, I'd be working in the hospitals. Or so when you're in there, discussing your business plan, if you've got a headache or a migraine, it can still hook you up. I'll bust you, yeah. I'll hook you, see? You, up, <laughs> <hook> you up. <laughs> so being in that field, I, I just had the mindset, okay, this is, you know, good job and medical career, it sounds good. And, you know, I was trying to build myself t- to enter the, the world as to be proud of me, you know, just make certain people in your family proud and mm. they feel like you're following the path that everybody is deems as good. And so when I realized that I can actually make the same kind of living, I can be happier by using my brain. Cause I'm, I'm, I've always been good at problem solving in most jobs that I've had. They'll always, once they ascertain that I'm good at just figuring, figuring things out, they'll always kind of put me in those positions. Oh, we can't find this way. So we've tracked, can you track it down? Just little errors. Why did this error happen? Can you see what the issue was? And I've just applied that same mentality into my businesses. And I just always say to my people I work with, I say, just don't present me with problems. Present me with, if there is an issue, present me with the solutions at the same time so we can find a way to fix it now. Not there's a problem and everyone goes home depressed and then you come in the next day and we still haven't fixed the problem. And it could be just a case of, you know, tweaking something or, going to the shop and buying some tape to fix something. And that's the attitude I, I use for my business. Any business or any venture I'm in, I'm saying, let's not, let's not create problems. Or let's, let's, let's come up with solutions and let's move forward. Because as you know, time is money. And we don't have time to be, <laughs> we can't let a day waste. Trust me, we can't. Not especially what, we, what we're what doing, which is, is it, it's interesting to say school. Do you find when you work with the older generation, as opposed to the younger generation, who is more creative? The 
the younger generation now are yeah. a million percent more creative. Okay. A million, gazillion, because they were born into the internet. We was te- The internet was tested on us. Phones were tested on us. Every kind of new technology, we was the test dummies to see if this is not going to kill off the whole population. But we're still here, so it was like, yeah, yeah it's safe. Um, I would say I tap into their creativity a lot, the younger generation, the older generation. We're dead. We're yeah. dinosaurs. <laughs> I'm just about getting the hang of um inst- how Instagram works. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um. It just depends how it applies to your business. I knew that. Again, me and my 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 my, my good friends, my business partner from. We have this conversation before YouTube was a thing, as big as it is now. We was the kids, not kids, but in our twenties, going and taking vlogs of our shopping trips taking pictures of our outfits, posting them online. Like we was doing all the things that they do now, but we just wasn't posting it on yes. social media. Yes. You know? Yes. We was going to play five side football and we was recording it and making little videos for ourselves of our football matches. We just wasn't posting it on social media. So we was applying the same things, but I don't know, the younger generation, like, oh put it online, put it online and we're from the generation of your no, no, keep some stuff up. <laughs> Online isn't for everything. And so that's the difference. They embrace it because they was born into it. We're still sceptical of it. I know I'm still sceptical of it now. Put a picture of my kid. Don't put your, put your kids online. It's like there's always this kind of fear of social media coming back to haunt us for some reason. <laughs> so I embrace yeah. it for my business. My business purposes are new that I have to know. I have to. I have to know how this works and how I can apply it because... If I want a business that operates on these channels, I have to understand it. And luckily, it doesn't come too difficult for me. I feel like it, I'm not as into it as the younger generation, but I'm in there, you know what I mean? So to be, to be successful in terms of online, how many hours do you think one needs to spend a day? A on, day? Yeah, a day. On social media? On social media. Promoting, networking doing whatever it is they're doing to better their business? Um, I think you could just apply it to maths in the sense of how much, firstly, how much spare time do you have and how much of that time are you willing to apply to achieve your goals? And if, if you know you can spend six hours on Instagram and in that six hours you can get 200 followers, um, 60 comments and about 20, 30 visits to your website, then I'd say it's worth it. It's just what is the minimum hours do you think for a business to even start showing growth? Because a lot, a lot of I mean, these are important questions because a lot yeah, of people yeah. don't understand that the most, imp- my opinion, it's not, it could be fact, I don't know, we can check that after, but in my opinion, the most important department in any given business is the marketing department. Yeah, and, and again, it, it took me three years of business to realize that. A lot of people don't know. <laughs> yeah, so we've got a lot of beautiful, amazing products and services out there, but because it's not being marketed, it's not getting to us. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm going to give you a tip. I'm going to give you a tip that I've... I'm going to give you some gold here. Please. Yeah, I'm going to give you some gold. So if you're a young business and you are on social media and you want to grow your account, find as many people that you trust and give them the login to your Instagram page. So what we did is everyone, there was four of us at the time in, involved in a business venture. We all had the login and I used to make a rule. Everybody has to like 100 pics a day, comment on 100 photos a day and follow our potential customers as many as you can and try to unfollow them in a couple of days if they're not really like cracking, just being honest. Um and if Someone do don't believe in the arm following scenario. <laughs> <laughs> and they're looking at you think, guys, you're gonna uh, you get my password after, so you know, you best, you know. Yeah. It's more work for you. I'm sorry. We got gold, we have to utilize this gold. No, but think about it, if it's just four people, if you can get ten people, if you can get twenty people that you trust to all do the same thing every day, you're gonna beat the algorithm because you're gonna you're gonna be liking so many pics. So many people are gonna be seeing it, looking who's this bright like it compounding, the compound compounding effect. So we used that to basically build up our following pretty quickly. And in that, we managed to have a good core fan base who was real customers. 
because again, social media, you can have a hundred thousand followers, but if only ten thousand of them are actually real followers who spend money, it's just vanity. Whereas you can have five thousand followers and three thousand of them are actual customers who actually spend money with you. That has more value than than the latter. So that would be my tip if anyone is in a really really young business and if you've got you're an older person you've got kids or you've got cousins or nieces or give everyone a login and tell them this is the plan and, and let's do this so right now some kids mind right now just racking unless it comes up empty they can't find anyone they trust or they're not comfortable what should they do well then, then you've got to tap into the power of yourself and you've got to put the work in and you've got to replicate the work of four people and you've got to find the time to fit it in and do it. I mean, so that's 400 likes, 400 comments. Yeah, that's six hours on the Instagram. Right? And it's how bad you want it. That's the question. Anyone who comes and sits down with me to, to start, I'm sorry, how badly do you want it? Are you willing to do everything and anything you, you need to do? Because if, you, if you're if you already put off by the way I'm talking to you or the, the questions I'm asking you, then you're not ready. Mm. You need that person who's there. Whatever you say, well, I'll do it. Cool. So I'm going to give you everything you need. If I feel like you're here to, or you 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 want to come and see me just to soak up a bit of the knowledge and and, but you, anything that's hard, oh, this is the thing. I've I've been at every stage where you know you're trying to build a website and it's not working. I don't know how to code. What do I do? None of my friends know how to code. I can't afford to pay someone to code my website. What what do I do in that situation? You've got to find a solution. You've got to go online. I believe the solution to that is you have to. That's when I said go to work, save up the money, mm-hmm. or go borrow money from friends and family and pay someone to do your website. A lot of people are building their websites and they can't build websites and they do an amazing job, but it's not up to standards. Because if I go on your website and it's looking kind of dodgy, I don't have time to appreciate the effort you put in because I personally don't know you. Mm-hmm. So therefore, I'm going to say, no, this person is not serious. I'm going to go to a different site. And yes, I understand bit to r- basically to make money, you have to spend money. Mm-hmm. It's, you can't do that. And um, it's weird because, not weird, but I don't believe in on working on my weaknesses. Mm-hmm. If I'm weak at something... I personally don't believe I should work on it. I used to think I need to be, but no. Because I only got 24 hours in a day. So I want to concentrate on what I do best. You know, there's two or three things that I do best and I am more than happy to find someone else to do what I need done, but they do it better than me. Although I might waste money on them, but I believe in my business. So I'm actually not wasting money. I'm investing money into the business. And a lot of people just want to do everything themselves. It just depends on the attitude. I, I 100% agree with you there in a sense of if you if you haven't got the skill, I don't find someone with the skill and, and work with each other. I 100% agree. But I feel like in that beginning stages of discovering your entrepreneurship or your creativity, I do 100% believe that you've got to be someone who's willing to expand your your knowledge base because at the end of the day you could be a graphic designer i know nothing about graphic design i need a simple logo made and because i haven't done my research you charge me 400 pounds come again like come again bring all your friends <laughs> <laughs> literally you know what i mean and because i haven't just taken my time to at least get the knowledge on the subject to know how much i should be charged that is where i feel like you, you have to do that at the minimum so that any situation you walk into you're not gonna end up getting fleeced and trust me i got fleeced my first two years of business was just walking in oh hi there do you know how to do this and they're like yeah have you got it done before it's like no this is the first time they're like oh yeah come in come in come in you got money right yeah yeah come in (laughs) (laughs) you know you need 10 hoodies yeah come come (laughs) you want the good quality or the 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 shit quality we want the good quality okay yeah get the shit quality (laughs) 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 Because you're excited, it's your business. Yeah, 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 yeah. We don't know any better. We didn't take the time to do the research. Not because we didn't. We just didn't know. You know? We just didn't know. But do you know what industry 
do that better than any other industry. True. Mechanics. <laughs> Listen, if you drive and you go look for a new mechanic, do your research. Yeah. I would strongly recommend find someone who can refer you to a mechanic because they, when I first started driving, ooh. well, probably the cars you was driving as well. Let's not go into that. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. How old is you, like 18? <laughs> yeah, he's right, I had a Fiat Punta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, mechanics, mechanics will rip you off because you don't yeah. know, like, you, you don't know what's under the boot. They're probably just twit, 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 boom. And that's why that most mechanics don't tell you to wait there. Mm -hmm. You go and come back there, so go in the afternoon. You might take them two seconds. And because, yep, yep, 150, please. And you happy? Oh, you fix my yeah, car. Yeah, yeah. Happy, and you're like, Ooh, yeah. You know, as soon as you walk in, they do this. <sighs> well, you know, <laughs> yeah, you know. If you <laughs> I have to get the parts. You know, this parts. Like, oh yeah, I have to call my guy. I I know someone. Yeah, yeah. they they will. My time. I, so do your due diligence when it comes to mechanics, or get recommendation. Be recommended. You know that that's that's very that's very crucial. Yeah. So. Yeah. What do you think the future is going in terms of um, creation? Are we getting um, any better? Or oh, I think COVID has forced has forced creatives' hands. I think it's forced. I think I think the development of the creativity. I think it's going to explode over the next two years. There's more to come. You believe? Yeah, it's not saturated. So. Not at all, because right now the attention is online because we're all stuck inside. Once we're all let out again, I feel like being able to actually physically express ourselves and I think we'll create more immersive experiences. I think I think once the world reopens again and we actually have license to be out, I feel like even me, I'm excited about it because I feel like right, I can go out, I can link up with more creative people. I can actually we can put on shows, we can I can put on cat books. There's there'll be no limit and I feel like our creative processes that we've all been holding on to now, I honestly feel like it's gonna explode. I feel like there's gonna be holographic fashion shows feel like there's going to be no limit to what, what's going to happen personally in the fashion creative music kind of pocket because think about it like this if they if they do say that no full full concerts are going to happen again like really you know packing a hundred thousand people into these parks and stuff they, they have to find a way around it mm -hmm. and i'm excited to see what they come up with because you can imagine if virtual reality where it's going that's a good tech tip as well if you're a stock investor i would invest heavily in an virtual reality sector because it's going to be a technology that's going to be needed especially if the say two years COVID-21 comes around and they're going to be like right everyone has to work from home but yeah we're going to make you do it virtual reality now so we're going to watch you <laughs> so you're going to you know we're going to be at work but everyone will be at their desk you may have to see them Jesus so we can track you but which is the same thing though it will just it will feel weird yeah you know, I, I guess the good thing is that will force people to clean up the house. No, no, because I'm at work. I look up and you're at your desk physically, but you're at home. But that's what, so that's I, what I, I won't mean. see your, your desk or your house. I'll just see you sitting at your desk. Oh, I see. So like a green screen kind of thing. Yes. So imagine we're all here, but we're not here. No, that's you scaring me. You know, Rasta's never here, so but he'll be there. No, Rasta says, it's, it's, it's JB I worry oh, JB. about. It's JB that's never there. Yeah, see, imagine he's at home. <laughs> he'll be at home, but he'll be there. Jeez. That's what I think is going personally. I, I feel like, he's, I imagine these workplaces have managed to save, how much money have they saved by their offices? A and lot. Do you know what? A, a, a very good, um, interesting book to read, which is, um, he predicted it. Is it Tim? Tim Tharris, I believe. I could get it wrong, but I think it's Tim Tharris. The book's got a 44 hour working week okay yeah I've, I've heard of it i haven't read it amazing i'm sure the author was tip fast i could i could be wrong but it's an amazing book jb what's the author on that tip before see here oh he's he's, oh, yeah. he's alert today four hour <laughs> working week please who's uh the four hour working week by yeah tim, tim ferris four hour amazing book basically what the book says is um it's pretty much happening now it, it, he says that working from home, you're more productive than working in the office. Because working from home, for one, you don't have to do the commuting. 
for two, we waste so much time going, speaking to your colleagues, you know, the small talks, going to the printer, going to the kitchen to make coffee, go inside, going outside for a smoke, cigarette, or whatever it is you do. So whereas if you have, if you work for, from at home, you're more productive, like you, you bang out your work. But what a lot of people do wrong is as soon as the email come in, the reply. So what he says is take your time, reply your email either halfway through your shift, the beginning of your shift, or the end of your shift. So you, you just work in, and you're, you're just so compact and intense, two, three hours a day, you're done. More productive. People get to save more money, um, transportation, building, rent, and things like that. However, the downside to that is socializing. But that's only happening because we're in a pandemic. Mm. But if the world opens up, if I work at home for two hours, you work from home for two hours, he, he, after the weekend, go meet up and socialise. Oh, they don't want that, though, do they? You know what I mean? Well, technically, yeah, they don't. But if you own your own business, you can do that. And as you said, if you go online now, let's say we go online, we create a product, do whatever, put it online, we could go out there, play football, do whatever. Yeah. Worldwide. You yeah. know, the internet is worldwide. It's circulating somewhere. You come back, oh, I sold one item, two items, three, whatever it may be. Yeah, and that's, 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 all, that's the aim. That's the aim, to make money while, while we sleep. That's always been the aim for me. Is to not have to be anywhere to make money. That's key because money don't sleep. Um, but I, it's interesting to make money while you sleep, and a lot of people don't understand that concept. Well, a lot of people don't understand the fact that if you physically have to be somewhere to get paid by the hour, they limited. Can, yeah, you can only make money when you are physically at that space. And for me, yeah, that means okay, I got to work twelve hours a day to make a certain amount of money. I'm that has never sat well with me, and. I've always thought to myself, all these other companies that exist, they're just started by someone, right? There was just a man or a woman. Mm. They wasn't superhuman or they weren't Albert Einstein. They was just like all of us in this room. So I think if they can do it, then I must be able to at least try to do it. And that's the 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 the, the thing I live by. Which is true. And if you look up the, uh, the richest 100 people, I don't know the richest 100 people. I wish I knew at least one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I'd, I'd be on the phone right now. If you look <laughs> literally. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. is the send secret? Me, send me that number. Yeah, li- listen, li- I'm just going to give you my bank account, just, just 0.005% of your work. <laughs> no, if you look at the richest 100 people, I want, uh, someone can look it up and tell me. I wonder how many of them are rich by working a nine to five. That's a good question. They're probably rich through. I mean, they might still work a nine to five, but they might not even see it as a job. It might be their company. But I actually wonder how many rich people on that 100 rich list who actually don't have any investments, any businesses, and they just work a nine to five. It'll be interesting. Yeah, I would say zero. That would be my guess. I would assume zero. Yeah. So, so there you go, people. If the rich 100 people are not rich by working a nine to five, you are not getting rich by working a nine to five. Should a nine to five be a hustle or should your business, your side hustle be a hustle and a nine to five be your main job? Your nine to five should be a means to an end. You should have, again, I flipped my mentality after that train incident and I said, you know what, I'm not working for I'm not working for my job anymore. My job's working for me. And I use that as my way of thinking to say, okay, I'm going to, as you said, save money and I'm going to get to this stage, then I'm going to leave. And once I'd flipped that mindset, working became a lot easier. Mm. And even the jobs, even when I got other jobs, I, I started doing courier work with DPD and other different jobs because I found jobs that suited my lifestyle for me to help obviously pay my bills but then they didn't take up the time that I could then put into my business so again it's if you are gonna if you need a job like we all need to work this isn't something that you can survive without but find something that suits you and your lifestyle so that you can put the time into your business any job which I'm in which drains me and takes up my whole day and then when I get home I've got no energy to pursue my dreams I just get further and further more frustrated and upset and that doesn't do well for my soul or my spirit. And yeah, usually I've got young kids and it's not good to be in that mind frame when you're trying to raise some children and be a partner and, and, and a dad. So find something that works. You've got a 
It's hard, man. It's hard. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's hard, it's hard, hard, but it's not impossible. It's not impossible. I believe in most developed country, actually every single developed country, it's easier than it is. Because, I mean, third world countries, developing countries, now that's where it's mm-hmm. pretty much near enough impossible. Yeah, and yeah, we're blessed already. We're, like I said before, we're blessed. We've got electricity, we've got running water, we've got access to government help if we need it. There's nothing you can really want for if you're being really serious, do you know what I mean? And that's the thing I take, I don't take that for granted at all. I'm already blessed. Being born in England, I'm already, I've already got a head start. Do you, do you know what it is? I wasn't born in England. I, I believe the kids who were born in England and they didn't have external influences, I think to some extent they are unlucky. The kids that are born in England. Yeah, and they don't have external... I say that to say this. I wasn't born here, so I have something to compare it to. Mm-hmm. So if a kid was born here and they said, oh my God, gosh, I had to walk for 10 minutes to get to work or school. (laughs) To them, that's stress. That's hard work. But to me, I'm like, are you serious? That's because I have something to compare it to. You know, before I had to go to school, I had to walk for a good hour and a half just to get water on on my back, on my head. That's right. Trust me, I used to be one of those kids that could balance, you know, you know how Messi balanced the ball on his head? I used to balance a whole full bucket. (laughs) (laughs) Me and my friend. So, and do you know what the beautiful thing is? When I was in that moment, when I was in a zone doing that back home, it wasn't hard. Yeah, it was not. Yeah, it was just. It's what I it was normal. It was standard. So when I came here, I don't know. Maybe the first <laughs> night coming, I must have woke up at five. Mommy, I'm ready. Like, no, 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 son. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the top is running. <laughs> no bucket. No, no. <laughs> I can go back to sleep. <laughs> My mom like, no, 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 son, you're not in Liberia. Just, 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 it's okay. It's okay. Are you sure, mom? I don't need to go. <laughs> Where's the backers? <laughs> I can imagine Francis walking down the high road. Imagine <laughs> me in Cuban <laughs> high road. <laughs> Listen, if you got a footage in Cuban high road of some skinny kid walking around, one bucket on his right hand, one bucket on his left, one on his head, Please send it to me. I'll pay oh, you for that wow. footage. That's oh, gold. Oh, no, wow. <laughs> no. Honestly, I, I, I think, um, yeah, I think kids who are born here to some extent they're unlucky because they have nothing to compare it to. So you hear a lot of foreigners, us as myself, I'm a foreigner as well. A lot of foreigners come in and say, "You're lucky. You're lucky. You've got this." But it's hard to, if you don't know what you don't know. Mm-hmm. Literally, you, you can never know what you don't know. Because if you don't know what it feels like, how can you then appreciate it to a certain extent? Yes, they should realise, but I think this is why you find a lot of foreigners come to the UK. Oh, yeah. And within they years. Yeah, they get it, two yeah. years, three years, four years, five years max. Mm-hmm. They are so financially free in comparison to people who were born here. I agree. 100%. And I think it's they got something to compare it to. Because... Life in the UK is hard, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to say it's easy by any stretch of imagination. But if we compare it to developing countries, it's easy. Yeah, 100%. And I think anybody who doesn't agree with that, then they're definitely the people who don't have anything to compare it to. Because I know my example was my grandparents. Them coming here, being able to go home, they've got big house, land, security, property. Do you know what I mean? This... And in a short space, they condensed all of that into, let's just say, 20 years, managed to have like six, seven kids, have a property in that short space of time. Like you said, that's 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 a different, that's working on a different frequency. Do you know what I mean? And that little piece of me, that's them, that's in me, is the thing that drives me. Because I've lived in the Caribbean when, you know, everyone's walking around in their underpants. Not everybody, but the kids my age are walking around in their underpants. I know it sounds weird yeah, what he yeah, just yeah, said yeah, there, but trying, <laughs> it's, it's normal. <laughs> See, go with kids working around. What, what, yeah, no, but it's it's, it, it's hard to explain, but it's not weird. This is no, no, none of those. Yeah, don't yeah, worry. But what are our grandparents? And this is again, I rate them for is that when the kids we didn't have to juggle water because we had a house, but my parents used to send they used to send us out to juggle water with the kids because so that we understood like you lot got running water, but. Look, all your friends that you're playing out with, 
and then messing around if they've got to get up at, like you said at 5 a.m go to the river jug the water bring it back up wash it rinse it boil it put it through the tap just to go to school in the morning and us doing that like you said it wasn't a chore it was like well we get to go and jug the water yeah right, cool you know what i mean but at the same time you know after your fifth trip and you're carrying them your arms start hurt you know what i mean you're thinking oh every day you know and that bucket has to come back near enough full yeah and there was no lids that bucket is halfway empty it's gonna i promise you you're only gonna do it once <laughs> never <laughs> again yeah, so that that was a humbling i think that's the one thing that stuck with me as a kid being able to appreciate the fact that we have we have so much you know what i mean we take it for granted you know that i've got friends who i really you know i care for them They're most of them are cousins and you know you think to yourself when you're going back they're just there like you always i think you leave me a pair of underpants like or a box of shorts or something and in your head you're thinking right oh, really but you know, that's the reality. They're like, yeah, do you know what? And I said, more time, you said, just leave your whole suitcase. Because my mum would just be like, do you want to give it to me? I said, yeah, so just, just leave your whole suitcase. They'll they'll make more use of whatever you give to them. Than oh, they yeah, do 100%. Because whenever I, I, I go, I, I like to travel. Whenever I travel to any third world country, I, I remember one time um, <laughs> a friend of mine came to pick me up from the um, airport after we came back from Gambia. I was literally in shorts, a vest, and slippers. Nothing. I left everything. Yeah, and they appreciate it more. And because I didn't need it. Yeah. I didn't need it. Yeah. So we have to you have to give. You have to give where possible, guys. Give, help others. Yeah, just understand the fact that, you know, if if you are healthy and you do have clothes and you, you've got a roof over your head, you're you're already lucky, man. You're blessed. Like just don't take these things for granted, man. Especially these last couple of weeks we've had in England, the, the cold. Like, I'll be honest, it's about 11 degrees, but I feel like it's summer because of the cold we've had the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Like, seeing people who are homeless and in that weather, and yeah, <laughs> it's not a joke. I was in my own blanket in my house, freezing. Literally. And you know, when the cold goes through your bones, there's nothing you can do. Nah, mate. So, we're, we're all blessed, man. Everybody just needs to accept that. Everyone be happy and just... Chase your dreams, man. Just 100%. So, Wes, where can these people find you? Please. They need to know where to find you. I believe they need to look for you <sighs> and search for you. And <sighs> I'm just going to stay hidden. You can't. You can't stay hidden. He can't, he's not allowed. Yeah, no, no. I'm going to stay hidden. Where can I find Where can um, they find you? I'll put my Instagram. I'll, say, I'll give you my Instagram. No, tell them. Tell them. Some people, because um, it'll be a visual. I'm um, actually, do you know what? Follow me at Wolfish Minds at Wolfish Minds on Instagram. Follow my main account at Wolfish Minds. Minds. That's on Instagram, and once you get him there, you can get him on any other platform. No, no you can't. Okay, only I can. <laughs> only I got, I got access to him. You don't. Or well, if you come to FK Studios, I yeah, might yeah, just take yeah. you where he is. Yeah, come FK Studios, and then yeah, we'll, we'll chop it up. But so. There's a young kid out there mm -hmm. who's looking to get in your space, the mm -hmm. creative space. He's struggling. What advice would you give him? Okay, first bit of advice is identify your goal. Sit down with a piece of paper or your laptop and just write, describe it. Literally purge that thing you're dreaming about. Get it out of your mind and onto a piece of paper. And now you have a goal to work towards. And then within that goal, I'd say you've got to identify what's the first step to achieving this goal. And then I'll be honest, once you identify the first step, just take action, complete the first step, and identify the next step, and just keep keep building, just do the same thing over and over again. Identify the next step, which is going to help you get further and complete it and move on. And after a while, you look back, you've completed 20 steps and you're, you're halfway there. So I'd give that advice to anybody even this advice I've been given and once I learn to get what's in my head out and physically create it it exists on a piece of paper now it exists on a website now it exists on an Instagram page now someone's bought into it so now it's, it exists in someone else's house who doesn't even know me and now someone else is going to see it who doesn't know me, who's going to buy it so it's, that's the step by step process I take and I would advise anybody who wants to be creative to take that step to, or wants to, has a dream, whatever it may be. You may just want to, you may want to work for Google. You may want to work for somebody. It doesn't necessarily has to be attached to entrepreneurship or owning your own business. It could be anything, your dream job. 
I, I, I'm a man that say I, I love entrepreneurship, but there are people or businesses that I would love to work for just to be in the building, learn, gather. And, you know, it's, it's I'd love to work for, for Puff Daddy or... FK Studios. Could you imagine? Or FK Studios, of course. But could you imagine being in the behind the scenes or even working behind the scenes of Dame Dash, Rockefeller, or any of those kind of things when we was growing up? Like, could you imagine being just a fly on those walls? So, so yeah, even your, even if your dream is attached to another company, FK Studios, um, just set your intention. There you go, and maybe maybe send FK Studios a little a little letter and of appreciation, or just reach out. Oh my gosh, listen to me. I probably shouldn't say this. If anyone was to ever send a letter, they get the job straight away. Well, there you go. Let us flood in as we speak. Literally. <laughs> Well, they can't because they don't know their address. <laughs> but to 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 add to what um what you said, I think that's very important when you talk about stages. Because a lot of people out there, I, um, I did this as well. Is you see someone who is successful, and that's probably stage ten, and you want to start straight on stage ten. But as Wes said, there's stage one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then you get ten. So don't get frustrated when you're stuck on stage one. But he's got this, that, that. It will come. Stay patient and go for it. Yeah, I'm. I'm think I'm on stage one still, to be honest. <laughs> but you know, it's all part of the process. And when it's timing, timing is a is a is a huge thing. I think that's the second part of it. Everything in this time. Me meeting. This at this time, me being here with you guys, and everything has its time. So, just have faith in. As long as you're doing what you're supposed to do, I think time and the universe will take care of the rest. I truly believe that. Amen. Inshallah. Inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the very part um of the show which I like. Uh, the guest always close the show. Really? Yes. And how you close it is up to you. Say what you mean and mean it like you said it and say it like you mean it. I don't know what I just said, but I said it. All right, I'm gonna. <laughs> my quote is gonna be, and I'm gonna leave with that is behind every sheepskin lies a wolfish mind. I'm trying to work that out in my head. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you a sheepskin or are you a wolfish mind? Are you the skin or are you behind? Love, peace, and happiness. <laughs> Till next time. <laughs> uh, <two. laughs>